Hi everybody, this is Why Theory, the importance of theoretical framework and conceptualizing theories. All right, so let's start with a metaphor. I am a huge fan of metaphors um, and quotes in life, um, and especially in counseling, I really like that. So I kind of think of theory as like a house. So you are the soil who you are as a person, your characteristics, your personality, like if you've taken the Myers-Briggs, I'm an INFJ, um, all that, everything about you and who you are and, and all the things that you have carefully cultivated about yourself and the things you've worked hard, you make up the soil. And then so on top of that soil, when building a house, you put your foundation. Um, theory is the foundation of counseling, so it needs to be strong, it needs to be without cracks, and typically it's made of one medium, concrete um, for a slab or wood for a pier and beam, side note, my husband's in construction, so I do know some of those words, um, incomplete foundations, like if you don't know all of the theory, or too many mediums, if you're throwing a bunch of things together, that's too many theories, lead to structural issues in your house, um, in the rest of the house. That's like the counseling with your client. So your skills, micro skills, which will be covered later in basic and advanced skills. I'm just kind of telling you where these all fit in your house. Um, and the techniques from your theory make up the frame, the walls, and your personality finally adds in the color and decor. Not everybody's house looks the same, but we really need a solid foundation. That's kind of how I see theory. All right, so although micro skills, which you learn later, um, those are those foundational things, empathy, listening, paraphrasing, things you'll learn later, I'm just kind of throwing out some of those words. Although micro skills are employed in most treatment approaches, the rationale for what, why, and when comes from your theory. What, why, and when comes from your theory. All the other skills and techniques kind of develop and come from there. Theories first. All right, so I love a good meme. Um, I also find myself funny. Don't know if anybody else does, but I make myself laugh. So treatment techniques always arise out of a systemic, systematic theory about the nature and cause of disturbance. So everything, your techniques, your skills, all that stuff comes first from theory. Like if we're talking about theory being, you know, the base, the foundation, everything else comes out of that. So I love this. This is my favorite movie and, and book. The book's even better. Just a theory, that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Love me some Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride. All right, so, oh, here we go, more memes. Um, I think it just keeps it entertaining and fun. So there's been a trend towards meta-analysis, which has given us a broader perspective of the effectiveness of theories and techniques. And we have this kind of big global push, probably no matter what industry you're in, counseling, education, whatever, there's this big push for evidence-based practices or EBPs. Um, and so I like this from the Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. All right, so a good theory answers three questions. This is how we evaluate if this is a theory that we wanna use for counseling. Um, and I didn't make this up. This comes from Dr. Armstrong. Um, I had him, I went through the masters at a and Commerce and got my PhD at a and Commerce and had Armstrong for quite a few classes and I absolutely love this. So a good theory answers three questions. The first thing it answers, oh, and uh, you may recognize some of these from your theory review assignments, driving this point home. A good theory ans asks and answers, what are we born with? What is the nature of the person? So what do we come into the world with? Do you believe we're tabula rasa? That means blank slate. Do you believe we are basically good? Do you believe we come in with nature and nurture? Is it both? Is it one, is it the other? Um, do we have a tendency towards growth? What do we come into the world with? A theory, a good theory answers that and tells what we come into the world with as people. And then the next question is, how do we get screwed up? Where does our maladjustment come from? The theory will say, you know, it comes from this or that. It comes from, um, you know, wherever it might be. It might be come from unfinished business or Freud might say it comes from, um, coping mechanisms or faulty thinking if we're talking like CBT or ABT. So how do we get screwed up? The next thing it asks is how do we change? And here's one little caveat. If you, the answer to this, if your personal answer is we don't change, then I think you might be headed into the wrong pro profession. It might be a time to reevaluate.
But all theories tell us how we change. What are the techniques? What is it? You know, is it just the relationship? Is it the relationship plus more? What is it? Um, is it incorporating all our pieces back into a whole? Is it, you know, analyzing our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors? What is it? They all answer that. So a little note here. This is why some counselors, some counselors and researchers think that solution focused is not a quote unquote real theory because it doesn't answer the first question. And to be a good sound theory, to give us that foundation of our house, it really needs to answer all of these three questions. Doesn't mean solution focus doesn't have its place or can't also be a tool that you use, but as a theory, it's not really fully fleshed out. Now, I have a really good friend that I respect that would argue that point with me uh, to the ends of the earth. So, you know, everybody has their own opinion on that. All right. So I really like, um, I'm a J, as I mentioned, on the Myers-Briggs, and if you don't know, that means I'm like kind of trend to the organizational side of the world. So I really like, especially with theories, because this class is like trying to drink from a fire hydrant, right? It's a heck of a lot of information about different theories that you've got to assimilate and file in your head. So I want to kind of give you a filing system so that you can kind of hopefully assimilate this information in the best way for you to be able to apply it down the road because you don't want to just um, memorize it and forget it you know get it and then forget it by the end of this class you want to really be able to use this and so really in this class I want you to be able to analyze it and pick the theory that best fits you we'll get to that in a minute so here's our filing cabinet I like uh, the first one I found um, on Google and then there's a little uh, a link at the bottom or some information at the bottom in the notes about where it came from. So it kind of puts these theories like on a spectrum from the inner world being super rich to the outer world being um, super rich. And so we've got the inner world and the there and then being like, let's sit in the past and that's Freud and psychodynamic intrapsychic. Um, and then it's got the outer world, the here and now on the other end. And so really we're looking at um, where those kind of different theories fall on this spectrum of inner world and outer world and there and then and the here and now. So um, you can see kind of humanistic and experiential in the middle, behavioral, systemic, interactional would be all the way on that other end in the here and now. Behavior is all about what's happening. Um, and you'll learn a little bit more about that, about the different types of behavior. So I also kind of want to think about this as I've got another one on the bottom that I made. And I got this from Dr. Abbasi because, you know, he's the guru of teaching this class. Um, and it's kind of the mind empty versus mindful. Behavior um, isn't really about what uh, we necessarily think or feel. It's more about stimulus and response. Um, pure behaviorists back in the back in the day kind of thought we were born into the world with nothing and some even thought that they could take a child any child a baby and turn that child into anything they wanted because babies were blank slates now there's also social learning theory which is kind of a little bit further along the spectrum that says no wait we do kind of have a brain in our head and we can watch what happens to other people and learn from it and maybe learn from others mistakes but that's really on the mind empty we're looking at conditioning um, and classical and operation operant conditioning and all that stuff that you're going to read about here soon. And then you've got Freud and Adler. Adler would be Adlerian therapy, and he was a little bit more about the environment, what was going on with you and your interaction with the environment, but really being able to overcome anything. Um, and then you've got reality and CBT or EBT that kind of fall right there in the middle. Yeah, you know, there there's a good behaviorist A plus B equals C and your interaction of your you know, the cognitive triad, thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and all that kind of thing right in the middle. And you keep moving down, and you've got person-centered. And person-centered is really what this program is kind of founded on. Person-centered is really a good foundation, um, good relational tools, starting point for any kind of therapy. Um, and some people find their home there and really enjoy that and find that fits them, uh, and, it, and it works well. But person-centered is really looking at um, growth and the inner world. Um, and then you've got like Gestalt and Existential. And, you know, it could be debated that some of these could go in a, a little bit of a different order. But this is just kind of give you um, a visual of like behaviorism over here is all about what's going on outside. Um, and then Gestalt and Existential are all about how you perceive yourself, 
and and how you perceive unfinished business and the meaning you assign to life and so that's very very much mindful what happens inside the person you can kind of think about where you just personally fall on these spectrums what do you think is it more about the inner world is it more that there and then is it the outer world with the here and now you know is it mind empty is it mindful where do you fall on and let's keep talking all right theory research and ethics this is the ethics week and i bet you were wondering when i was going to get to how this ties into ethics so here we go researchers have found that clients report greater satisfaction and better outcomes when the counselor counsels from one theory versus eclectic that word eclectic gets thrown around a lot and i know a lot of people um in, that after their masters decide oh well i'm eclectic and you know what i just cringe at that i really feel like eclecticism is kind of a cop-out it's a cop-out for saying you know i don't really know and i don't really want to take the time and the brain power to stick to one theory so i'm going to say i'm eclectic and i'm just going to pull stuff out my bum that is not good we need to have a framework and be intentional about how and why we counsel and really that's supported by the research one theory or two theories or even integrative which is a whole other thing that's taking two theories and using them together um, both came out higher than eclectic when um, looking at client satisfaction and we're looking at um, the outcomes we start with one theory because just like you don't get a, a kid who's just learning how to walk and throw them on a bike you've got to learn one first before you can go learn roller skates and a skateboard and a bicycle or something else like that so we want to stick to one first and really learn it well so I think about like if I ever had to stand up in front of a courtroom and and defend the way I work with a client and saying, well, I really felt like trying this or I felt like I would like this would really work well with them. That's not really acceptable or saying, well, you know, I read an article and I, I thought this thing was really cool. So I just tried it out my, on my next client. Think to yourself, would that expl explanation stand up in court? Would we look like we were intentional and using a framework and using a research based? No. So for our ethical ethics, do no harm, non-maleficence. We need to make sure that we start from one theory and that we are going back to our theory and that our decisions and our counseling is very sound in its foundation. You can tell I'm a little passionate about that. All right, here's what the experts say. Fall Holden and Marquis, who have a really good theory textbook, um, say counseling theories help to inform and guide counselors and how to assist clients in the change process. The theory is where the change comes from. All right, much research has been presented over time that demonstrates the utility of all major the theories. All the ones that you're gonna learn out in your book um, have been researched and demonstrated to be efficacious. Many researchers have tried to say, oh, is this theory better than this other one? Or is it this techniques? Or is it this kind of framework? Or is it this or that? And really what it has come down to is that there are a few very important things. One is the important part is the relationship. The next part is creating expectations through a theory. That's done through your theory, your one theory of choice. And the third one is helping facilitate healthy actions from your client. The relationship, a theory foundation, and healthy actions are what really lead to change. There's not necessarily one better theory or another. We could kind of get into the weeds about it and say like some theories and some research show that they work better for this kind of problem or that kind of problem. But you know what? That is a problem for future you. Right now, I just want you to start working on finding your own theory. All right, so here's how we identify um your theory this is a three phase frame that's a tongue twister three phase framework for theory building by spruill and benchoff so phase one is identify your personal beliefs we're going to do that in this class that is the very first thing we're going to do here phase two is learn counseling theories that is also covered in this class you will complete phase one and phase two by the end of the semester phase three is integrate integration of your personal beliefs into your identified theory and that really comes throughout the rest of the program phase one and phase two are kind of easy boxes to to check off phase three that's where the real work is and that's where you're going to learn all the different things and you're going to be integrating your learning from these classes basic skills advanced skills practicum internship one and internship two that's where you'll be working with the integration and it sounds like a lot but just like eating an elephant 
one bite at a time. Everybody starts here. Everybody feels this way. All right, so theories are not off of the top of your head or from the seat of your pants. I love this, Austin Powers. I also like to live dangerously. My husband kind of looks like Austin Powers. All right, so let's dive into developing your theory because really that is the point of the class. The point of the class is not to mem memorize every part of every theory. The point of this is to learn and assimilate and then pick your theory and be able to apply it to clients later down the road. So I really kind of, I told you, I like metaphors, I like analogies. So I'm gonna use one about the shoe. So developing your theory is a process. It involves understanding your own worldviews and biases. You have to know yourself first. The higher, the better your self-awareness, the better your choosing and integration of theory will be. And this is not like a, you pick one theory and you write it on your tombstone and that is it, the end for the rest of your life. Um, your theory may change over time as you gain more awareness, but the important part is for now, knowing yourself and picking the theory that best fits you because finding a theory is like trying on a pair of shoes. You wanna find a pair of shoes that fits you. They should be comfortable, they should be durable. If you get a pair of shoes that doesn't fit you, you will constantly be struggling to walk. In our analogy, that's counseling. Or always thinking about your shoes, always thinking about them because they constantly hurt. And in counseling, you don't wanna always be thinking about your thinking. You don't always wanna be thinking about what you said, how to make your theory work. We want it to become as easy as possible, and so that's finding the best fit for you. And when you're first learning to walk, you don't get a whole bunch of different kinds of shoes. Usually parents buy, uh, or at least this is my experience, buy one kind of really good walking shoe or even just barefoot. Um, and so you don't wanna get a whole bunch of different things because it can become confusing and it won't be as good for your client. Your theory may change over the course of your career as you learn more about yourself. So I, when I completed the master's program, I was die hard CBT, still love me some CBT, mad respect for CBT. Um, I was a teacher and so I really loved that directive piece of it. But as I got to know myself and went into the PhD program and learned a lot more about myself, I found, you know, I really gravitate more towards the non-directive side, towards those humanistic stuff. So I started, you know, going back to my old theory notes, reading about it, thinking about myself, and I found that Gestalt's a better fit for me. And that's what I've stuck with for, for years and years now. All right, you want to start small. This sounds like it might be a big task. Maybe at this point you're overwhelmed. You're like, oh my gosh, this is too much. Can I just get this class over with and be done with it? So when you're first learning theories, it can seem very overwhelming. The first step is to know yourself. That's what we're gonna focus on first. That's why we're talking about this now before we ever cover a specific theory. Up till this point, you've just talked, learned about kind of foundations, the counselor as a person, and then ethics this week. Self-awareness is the very first step. And you're gonna have self-awareness kind of like the, that phrase beat into you for the rest of your counseling career. Your answer, you answer the three theory questions for yourself, and I'll put those back up in a second. Then you learn about the theories. After you've covered them all, you choose the one that mostly closely aligns with your worldview. In your practicum and internships, being eclectic is not an option. So just so you know, they're gonna make you pick one too. You stick with one theory and learn it well. Down the road, once you are licensed and have learned your one theory and are comfortable, you know it inside and out, you might decide you need to change shoes or want to add one more pair of shoes to your wardrobe. I also like to use my theory and I never change my foundation. I always see the world through the foundation of Gestalt, but I may bring in some other techniques from theories, other theories and use them in a kind of a Gestalt way. And if you ever have me for practicum and internship, I talk through that. Um, I'm not gonna talk through those pieces now because that's a down the road, that's a next level skill right now. We just wanna know ourselves and find our, our theory match. All right, so once again, here's the three theory questions. You need to answer these for yourself. What do you believe about human nature? Are people basically good or bad? How much free will do people have? What kinds of inherent capacities do people possess? These are a few questions that address the inherent nature people have at birth. What do you believe about it? After you answer that one and take some time, sit with these questions, really, really answer these because it will save you a lot of, a lot of thinking and heartache down the road. Then answer, how do people become maladjusted? How do we get screwed up? 
Why do we develop problems? How does that happen? And then how do people change? What needs to happen for change to occur? And again, if your answer is we can't change, really need to do some cell searching. This is probably not the program for you. All right, now to close out, now what? Okay, I kind of talked you through how we add in theories and gave you a framework and how we assimilate and best pick the theory that makes our lives the easiest and makes our clients' lives the best. So over the course of the semester, continue to evaluate which theory meshes with your worldview. Those three theory questions you're gonna be answering in a discussion, and I want you to save your answers somewhere um, and constantly be reevaluating. Okay, I kinda like this theory, does that mesh best? Okay, now what? Maybe this one's a better fit. You don't have to pick right away, wait until you get all the information. Explain how it fits, the theory fits with the above three questions. And I kinda like this little thing. Everyone tries to make me into lemonade, but I just can't be something I'm not. I want you to be who you are in counseling and find the theory that best matches you rather than trying to fit yourself into some kind of box. All right, as always, here's the references for this presentation. And I look forward to getting to know you more throughout the semester. Thanks. Bye.